This will be a simple guide for acquiring weapons grade uranium from uranium ore in nuclear tech mod. Preferably when you are starting out and making these simple nuclear bombs, they will require uranium-235, 238 or plutonium-239 in order to make their cores. All three of these materials can be acquired from uranium ore. Cause let's just face it, no matter how many guns are added in the mod, the star of the show will always be nuclear bombs. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Let's start with the core materials needed for these three nuclear bombs. So little boy is the simplest one out of them all as it takes uranium-235 projectile along with the subcritical uranium-235 target. Fatman takes a plutonium core and the gadget takes a heavy plutonium core. Now as the name suggests, the uranium-235 projectile and the subcritical uranium-235 targets, they take only uranium-235 nuggets. Plutonium core takes plutonium-239 and beryllium nuggets. Large plutonium core takes plutonium-239 and uranium-238 nuggets. Now for acquiring these, we will use the Xernox reactor as preferably is the first reactor that you are going to make. And this reactor will provide us with plutonium and uranium-238. Now if you want only uranium-235, then gas centrifuge will suffice. Cause gas centrifuge allows for complete isotropic separation and you will acquire uranium-235 and 238. So we will start with normal uranium ore, no need for bedrock ores in this one. And when this is processed in an ore acidizer and then a centrifuge, it will quadruple the amount of uranium powder you are going to get out of it. So four uranium powders along with you will also get radium-226 and lithium. They can go in another grid. The uranium powder will go in a furnace where it will get converted into ingots and ingots will then get converted into billets. Because billets can directly be used to make fuel rods and the uranium hexafluoride. So in total, we acquired 96 uh, billets from 16 uranium ore. Out of that 96, we take 48 and we start producing uranium hexafluoride. So one chemical plant for hydrogen peroxide. Then we will take the uranium billet and combine it with sulfur. So two billets, two sulfur, that will give us yellow cake. Also hydrogen peroxide, yeah. So yellow cake then goes in the third chemical plant where it gets combined with one fluoride and water to give us uranium hexafluoride. Now uranium hexafluoride goes in an array of basically four gas centrifuge. So from the normal uranium hexafluoride, we go to low enriched uranium hexafluoride, low enriched to medium enriched. Then from medium enriched, we get to highly enriched uranium hexafluoride. And in the fourth gas centrifuge, the highly enriched uranium hexafluoride gets completely separated and that is what gives us the uranium-235 nugget. So yeah, that's how you get uranium-235, also 238, a lot of 238 with it. Finally, all of the fluoride will just return back. So basically this process doesn't consume any sulfur or fluoride. It's a net sum process. So you will get all of the sulfur and fluoride back. Now, in order to place the gas centrifuge, you just place them touching like this. The output should go into the next gas centrifuge. So they will just auto arrange themselves like this. So finally, we are nearing the end of this process where we can see how much we got out of those 48 billets. So there we go. 24 nuggets of uranium-235, a little short of basically producing both of the components needed for little boy. So placing them in here, the projectile and the target. And when this projectile will hit the target, it will go boom. So yeah, that's uranium-235. Also remember that you do need the overclock upgrade in the final centrifuge, which is important for the complete separation. Anyways, with the remaining 48, uh, of the uranium billets, we can make natural uranium fuel rods for Xernox reactor. These are made with zirconium splinters and we will make total 24 of these. 24 is exactly what's needed for a single Xernox reactor as it has 24 slots. Now once the fuel has depleted, the middle one is going to deplete the fastest, the outer fuel rods are going to deplete the slowest, just like how, how basically it goes in an RBMK reactor. We take those depleted fuel rods and then we come to a crafting table because from these depleted fuel rods we will get the depleted uranium the hot depleted natural uranium back so this fuel can then be cooled down 
in a spent fuel pull drum, the more water you have on each side, the faster it will cool down. And after some time, when it starts cooling down, we can process this depleted natural uranium fuel in a centrifuge. And that happened way too fast because I'm a dumbass. I basically have an overclock upgrade in that. But anyways, once it's processed in a centrifuge, then you will get uranium-235, no, 238, and plutonium-239 out of it. Along with that, you will also get reactor-grade plutonium, which can be used to make more fuel. So basically, yeah, once all of the fuel, it has depleted and you have processed it, that should give you a whole lot of uranium-238 and plutonium-239. Now, all of these can be used to make the cores for the remaining two bombs, the Fat Man and the Gadget. So, yeah, there we have the remaining two cores. And that is how you can acquire Plutonium-239, Uranium-238 and Uranium-235 for these early game nuclear bombs, which mostly will be the first bombs that you will make. As for the other components, uh, these bombs, they take a lot of steel, some dye. Mainly they take control units. The simple bombs, they take no, normal control unit. The bigger bombs that you will make in the late game, they take advanced control units, which are much uh, basically expensive to craft compared to the normal control unit. And all of these have micro crafting recipes. Like you will need to do a lot of sub crafting in order to acquire these. Because every component has other components that they need. And those other components have their own set of crafting recipes. So yeah, a lot of nested crafting that you will need to do in order to make a nuclear bomb. Also, you will need the soldering station in order to make all of the circuits and components needed. This has become very important in order to acquire a nuclear bomb. So yeah, that's how you will make a nuclear bomb. But once you have the control unit, that will allow you to make a lot of the early game bombs. Also rockets and nuclear warheads. Finally, this video would be incomplete if we didn't actually explode one of these. So there was this nice village nearby and we are going to give it a taste of the gadget. So, there we go. Nothing beats the sight of that is nuclear bomb. Hmm. Sadly, our factory got wiped out where we did all of the processing but it was worth it and yeah that is how you acquire all of the materials needed for these early game bombs now i hope you guys enjoyed this video you learned something from it if you did do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this now if you have any questions regarding this leave them in the comment section below and i'll get to them as soon as possible peace out my guys stay safe